Hello, it is me again. It's Big Bricky. I have finished talking about the lion. It is not talking about 10th edition. This will take, most likely, far longer than the other one. So, let's go! Alright. A mind-blowing Nerothrope. New edition of 40k is coming. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Bricky stream right here. Say hello to YouTube. Say hi, Mom. Okay. Okay. 10th edition Warhammer. Um, for the most part, this your questions answered thing is a bunch of bull. They did not answer nearly the questions that we actually should have uh, should have answered. They answered a few, and they're uh, mainly PR stuff because the real questions they're going to drip feed us over the next couple of months because it's just how GW is. Um, no, no, no hate to it. Just this is not real, um, though it does offer a couple interesting insights. All right, so 10th edition has been widely rumored to come out in the summer of 2023. It appears that those rumors are in fact correct. And they start off with a trailer of 10th, similar to the Necrons and Sisters trailer of 9th, uh, with this time Ultramarines and the Nids. Um, I'm not going to lie. I, I know a lot of you guys really like this, these trailers and stuff. I'm not huge on them. I'm gonna move this over. Um, I, I think that these the animation of a lot of these trailers is really stiff and, and not always that great. Um, especially some of the Space Marines, they don't look good. Uh, particularly that that like Psyker Space uh, Terminator. I don't know if they they post a picture of him anywhere around here. That no, doesn't look like it. Um, it's not my favorite. Uh, what made it look cool to me was just the Nids. The Nids looked great and the nids actually it was nice seeing the space marines fucking lose you know it was just genuinely enjoyable to see i was looking for the picture to see the space marines lose and lose hard gilliman looked a little funny he looks a little funky i won't lie they, they do look a little bit bizarre um but they got rocked and that was lovely to watch the nids looked like actual nids, like lore accurate lids, lids, nids, and I loved that. Um, but I, I won't, lo I won't lie, I, I, I don't love these trailers. I think they're a little stiff. The animation is just a bit stiff and and not always there. And the, and the faces look kind of weird. Yeah, they look a little bit bizarre. Everything Tyranid looked amazing, but the Marines did look a little funky. I would say the 9e trailer was better too. Yeah. The facial animations on the sister in the 9e trailer, I think was better. Uh, definitely. Anywho, sorry. Um, side note. Also, I, I want to say thanks for all the bits and subs. I I've turned off alerts for this so they don't just spam the, the video portion. Um, but I'll get to them after I'm done. So, 10th edition Warhammer. The concept they are going with is simple... Uh, simplified but not simple, or, or some version of saying that. Uh, what was the? There it is. Simplified, not simple. Yeah, that's their their motto here, which is a pretty good idea to go with. Um, one of the largest complaints of Ninth Edition 40k, and honestly 40k in general, is a excessive amount of difficulty getting into the game. Um, now, often the amount of difficulty getting into it coincides with the level of freedom and the level of complexity in a enjoyable way too. Um, hot take maybe, but I would prefer a more complex game if it meant more options and more diversity in the game itself. Um, I actually really liked 9th edition. Uh, it definitely has a bloat problem. It has a lot of problems, uh, but I think comparatively, I think ninth is ninth is really fun. I liked ninth for the most part. I will remember it fondly. Uh, it had its power creep issues. Um, Drukari, Nids, Admech, hundred um, percent, Harlequins. But for the most part, I was pretty okay with ninth. Uh, I liked Ninth a lot, and I would take complex and uh, customizable over simplified and basic any day of the week. 
Um, so that's my initial mental state for it. Um, moving on real quick, uh, I'll have to kind of paraphrase a lot of things they said online because unfortunately um, they don't really, it's just like the live stream and I don't want to just talk over it. Um, first things first though, a little bit of mall stuff. New Termies, uh, new Termies, they look, they look great. Uh, I gotta be honest, uh, those of you who made a bunch of Dark Angel Terminators for, um, you know, because they're really good right now, um, get shit on. That's what you get. <laughs> no, no, but seriously, this actually did look pretty good. Uh, they feel very justifiable to what Space Marines normally are like. They're old Termies, but with a better kit, and I don't think many people are upset with that. They are... Terminators, but better and a little taller. And I I don't think anyone wanted more. That's kind of perfect. That's kind of perfect. Um, new Nids, too. Uh, I hope this is not it for New Nids. I love this new model. This new Termagant looks so good. They've been hitting the gym, it would seem. Uh, this is just great for a basic troop. It looks excellent, actually excellent. Uh, I hope that they will have uh, particularly, oh, GW said that this would be the largest ninja release in company history in the live stream. <laughs> Lovely, because the Gene Steeler, Steelers right now look like dog shit. Gene Steelers are awful and their bases are way too small. I need those things to be changed. They look terrible. Um, Ripper Swarms could look a little bit better in my opinion. Gargoyles need a huge update as well. Uh, most big bugs I think are pretty good. Um, the Broodlord might need a, uh, oh yeah. Um, uh, uh, Tyranid Gene Stealer. Shopping. Images. They look awful. They look just terrible. Uh, they're also on like 25 millimeter bases, the same as like a guardsman. And they're so much larger than that. Look at how they hang off the base. Look at, look at what it looks like with, oh my God. It is not good. Um, but other than that, I'd say just like the Carnifex would, maybe would get a, a, a change. Um... Maybe let you repose the Toxicrine. Because the Toxicrine is like, Hi guys, how's it going? It's me, the literally unplayable bug. Um, so it's a bit rough on that one. Um, but most of the ones are pretty good. Tervagon looks good. Uh, I like the Moloch a lot. You know, most of them look pretty good. Just the, the small the Griblies look, need some adjustments. Um, but this is a great start. GW is really weird. Uh, they have so many things I hate. Their pricing structure, how they run a lot of stuff, codex like like creep and, and online rules. I have, there's so many things I dislike. Um, but they nail all of the mostly important stuff when it comes to building a universe, which is artwork, books, and writing strength and models. They are so good at those three things that it like saves it all. Um, anywho, gameplay changes, game changes. Uh, you told us that while War Before Decay is a fun game, there are parts that are too overcomplicated and the learning curve is too steep. In particular, there was too many stratagems and too much complexity in army selection. We've listened and new edition has been simplified, but not simple. So they said that they, uh, instead of a huge amount of faction stratagems, They'll have access to a handful of the best ones, but there are new universal stratagems as well uh, that allow you to be reactive in your opponent's turn. So that's a big thing right there. I do know that there is a different way in order to use your detachments. I believe they said it was one Warlord and then three, a uh, uh, rule of three, except for troops, which is I think six. And that's it. Which is pretty similar to Arcs of Omen. 
It's basically arcs. And I think we could pretty much all universally agree that the arcs of Omen detachments are pretty great. Um, I, I honestly, no, the, I, I think they're the best one. I think arcs is the best one. It's so long, you just have to give troops a nice bit there, which we'll talk about in a moment. But as far as I'm concerned, arcs are great. Um, stratagems. So I am in two minds about stratagems. I actually like stratagems. I think the more ways you give a player decision making, the more this game becomes about skill and less about army construction and the meta and, and, and luck and dice rolls. Uh, it's one of the many reasons why I'm such a sister sim because I think Miracle Dice are a great mechanic that give the player a whole new level of decision making. Uh, how do I spend my dice? Where do I use them? How do I allocate them? It's a whole thing. Um, I would say that Gene Steeler Colts have a big part of that too. Um, the Eldar and the Strand dice, same shtick. Uh, I, I like that decision making, that extra little bit. And so stratagems are part of that. Uh, I do also agree that stratagems are, for the most part, there are too many of them. Um, however, World Eaters is a bit too small for me. World Eaters have six stratagems in total. Doubled depending on running, if you're running like a Army of Renown. Now, it seems that they're trying to make, like, various types of Army of Renown things. Like, I'm going to build an all-Terminator list. Okay, you get access to these six Terminator list army stratagems. I'm going to make a regular list. This thing, etc. Um, also, a lot of the stratagems were just kind of boring. Um, Igner makes a great point. One of them was just smokescreen which is such a boring stratagem to run as a classic uh, strat. Whereas there's other armies with a lot of really interesting stratagems. Uh, Gene Stealer Cult have a godly amount of crazy weird stratagems that have all kinds of uses. Uh, Jukari have some pretty neat ones as well. Um, there's, uh, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of ones. Um, Guard have some fun ones. Vengeful Salute. Is one of my favorite guard stratagems. It's a little strong, it's a little too strong. Probably could be two CP, but god damn it, is it fun? Um now that my stream is back alive. Uh we'll get back on topic. Um stratagems, stratagems, right, 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 stratagems. Okay, so yeah, I feel like there needs to be like a sort of middle ground. Um, I don't mind the middle ground of them adding a lot more core stratagems, which I do think is pretty good. Um, but stratagems for your army definitely add a bit of flavor to it. Uh, through a decent amount of just overall flavor that was fun to to utilize stratagems to the strength of that army that was fluffy so i think world eaters with six is a bit too small uh, i prefer like eight to ten definitely um uh but it i guess it also it all depends uh though it depends on what the universal stratagems are because most to all universal core stratagems are are already reactive. Think about it. Counteroffensive is reactive in a melee. A morale test is, well, it's kind of, insane bravery is kind of uh, reactive. Uh, fire overwatch is reactive. Uh, cut them down is reactive. Um, and I guess command point reroll is not necessarily reactive. I guess you're reacting to a bad roll, but not to what your opponent's doing. Um, unless it's a save, I suppose. But out of the core stratagems, like, you know, they're mostly reactive, so I'm a little curious to see how they would adjust that. Um, I'm not going to lie, and this is also going to be a hot tape take. I absolutely despise counteroffensive. The uh, fight next strat, the 2CP uh, interrupt, I hate it. I hate that stratagem. It is not because it's like too overpowered. Well, I don't know. It's It dictates the game. The entire game, in any kind of decent level of play, requires you to have two CP on hand for the fight phase every single time it happens. Which means you don't get to use anything else fun. You have to always be saving it for counteroffensive, Which is just constantly aggravating. You will always need it in your back pocket. Uh, maybe making it once per game 
would be fine. I'd prefer once per game counteroffensive. That'd be kind of nice. Uh, but I just, I hate that strat. It kills the flavor of the game. It kills me from using any good other stratagems basically ever. Um, so if counteroffensive dies in a ditch or at least becomes like a once per game thing, all right. Um, moving on though, where are the dash sheets? This is going to be the biggest adjustment. Um, they say before that though, it says there are improvements on this everywhere in turn structure, army selection, morale, terrain, missions, the ways the character interact with units and so on, the list goes on. If I'm not mistaken, they said something about the psychic phase like going away. Uh, which is really fascinating. Uh, I guess psychic witch fires are now like a weapon that is done in the shooting phase and buffs are maybe command phase of some kind. Like they say the psychic phase is gone, but it's not actually gone. Now it's, it's not literally gone. It's just adjusted. Obviously, the psychic heavy armies like Thousand Suns and so on will get a compensation or an adjustment in some way. Um, but that is going to, you know, that's going to happen. A anyone, a reminder for everyone, chat, when you're watching a giant reveal on Twitch, like the 35k viewer Twitch reveal thing, never re actually read the chat. They're dumb and they want to say things so they get seen. And I was like, rip k Suns, like, like they're not going to do anything. Like, it's just, it's just like, we're just going to remove Psychic Phase and that's it. Like, bad, bad, bad. I smack you. Um, But anyway, yeah, I'm assuming Psychic Abilities and stuff are going to be adjusted throughout the phase. It would, like, if I were playing, say, um, Chaos Space Marines, I would argue that the Master of Possessions revive probably would happen in the movement phase. Warp time, probably also in the movement phase. Things like that. Uh, warp marks so the, does the, um, the plus one to wound thing, probably the command phase. Like It gets adjusted. Anywho, moving on. Um, turn structure. I'm hoping that's what they're referring to. Army selection. Yeah, morale is interesting. I, I thought that maybe uh, yeah they're going to be implemented in other things. Uh, however, like me, Night Lords, morale... I'm assuming there will be adjustments when the morale goes a certain way. Personally, I like the idea a lot of making leadership genuinely a useful effect, where instead of the possibility of a dice roll having things run, it's more of a, if you are minus this much morale, you are now hitting at minus one, or your movement is now halved, or this unit fights last. These are very strong, Obviously, these are just kind of uh, options, but it's like, I like the idea of health brackets. Yeah, basically health brackets for morale is how I see it. You can, you can bracket in that way. You know, it's an idea. It's an idea. Uh, morale is like a bracket. So anyway, this is the biggest, like, not really smoking gun, but whatever you want to call it. The thing to look at, right? The thing. The thing to look at. So, this, the idea that they're doing is that every single army's unit can have a data card, and that data card alone is all they need in order for you to place it and understand what is going on. Which, uh, I think is an incredibly good idea, and I love it. Couple things I want to look at. One, there is no core keyword down here on the bottom. Uh, there's a couple others, Great Devourer, Endless Multitude, Termagants, uh, but there is no core. Um, core, I think, was a fine idea that was implemented poorly and was mainly just there to make Necron players sad, apparently. Um, but overall, it just seems that there's no core there. And if something's gonna have core, it's gonna be the goddamn Termagants. Um, but so far, everything else here seems about the same. You've got six inch move, toughness three, five up save, one wound. Leadership is eight plus, which is interesting. It's not eight, it's eight plus, which makes me think that maybe it's some kind of two dice roll. 
uh, maybe, where you would need you would need a eight plus to get no negatives or something. Um, and then you know, if you roll under, here's a bracket. If you roll under double, here's another bracket or over double, I guess would be it. Whatever. You get what I mean. Um, and then you've got OC, which is great because I live there. Uh, which is two. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, the biggest change I think out of this whole thing is the adjustments of attacks and ballistic slash weapon skill being loaded into the weapon itself, which can I say is the best fucking change ever. I love this so much. If there's anything that I'm happy about, it's this right here. This, this is the best shit. Why? One, at a glance. At a glance, it's amazing. It's extremely easy to just look at. It's like, okay, I'm going, and not only that, but I don't know if you could tell this chat, it's, it's tiered in that way. Th think of it, right? I'm gonna shoot my Termagants. Let me check my range. Cool, let me pick up my dice. What I need for my dice, and then tough, and then uh, you know, to wound, save, damage. It's all in the exact speed of you going through the motions. It is fucking incredibly strong, uh, smart, awesome. Um, I would also like to point out that the fancy pantsy gun also known as Hunter in the Votom, has now made its way to 40k. The Termagant Devourer is gun. It has one range, two shots, and that's it. We finally have gun. We finally have keyword gun. Which is good, because now guns can have keywords attached to them. And having keywords attached to them is very handy. For example, Termagant Spine Fists right here are assault and pistol. Also, they're bringing back Twin Linked. Let's go, baby! We got fucking 7th edition Twin Linked back! Let's go, Twin Linked! Um, Twin Linked was like, a, I think double shots, was it? Or it maybe lets you re-roll the shots? Yeah, I forget. Doesn't matter. Point being, twin linked. Was it reroll or miss hit roll? Oh, that makes sense. Um, anyway, fascinating thing. Um, this spine fist are both assault and pistol. It's both. So there's no longer being stuck with the one, which is assault or pistol or et cetera, et cetera. Now you have an assault and pistol and twin linked, which I'm going we'll assume is a reroll. Um, the flesh bore here is assault as well. You could now, you don't have to worry about memorizing every single, well, you kind of do, but every single one, you have the base of gun and you can attach things to it, which is brilliant. So smart, love it. But what's even better about it is the fact that it leads to more diversity in making cool weapons. The fact that Termagant Spine Fists are assault and pistol is really cool. Like you can move fast and shoot in combat, which is a very tyrannid thing to do. You know, like it always, I can imagine it kind of sucking how certain things are stuck with, um, I don't know, like, like a bolt gun. We'll go with a bolt gun, right? A bolt gun being rapid fire one, it's always felt so anemic. It's one shot out to 24, but two and 12, it, it's so mediocre. But a bolt gun maybe having, I don't know, twin linked or, or some kind of or assault maybe, if you know, you wanted to make some assault bolters that are both rapid fire and assault. Very space marine -y, like, you know, the shock tactics, get in there, fast and start blasting so you get double shots and you're advancing it it can make guns that felt like they were restricted to one category better um i'm gonna i'm sorry i'm harping on this for so long but it's just so good to me that 
Now weapons can be both weaker and stronger. And it's also very easy to balance. Data slate. We've removed assault from spine fists. Done. Update the data card online. Done. Or add assault to a thing. Just add the term. Change the whole thing. So now weapons are not stuck with... I can't just be gun anymore. I have to be rapid fire, assault, etc., etc. I have to have some benefit. Now, they don't need to have a benefit. They can just be gun. But for certain guns that might be a little bit weak, you're in Spine Fist. This is only Strength 3. Don't forget it's a Laz gun. You can now chuck extra options to it. You can make things stronger. You make things weaker. You get, mm. I, I am so hard. Melee weapons now, too. Same shtick. Your attacks, your weapon skill, and this this adds even more. There's even more knobs to turn, as as Igner says. You can adjust the ballistic skill and weapon skill per weapon. You know you know what sucks when you fight three Redemptor Dreadnoughts surrounded by Gilliman. It's the fact that the goddamn sons of bitches are hitting with full rerolls of everything and this and that and rerolls to wound and all this kind of crap on threes with everything. A dreadnought hitting on threes with its heavy stubber is totally get acceptable. It's a tiny little, little doodad on top. Like it's easy to shoot, but I wouldn't mind if it's gigantic armed plasma cannon hits on fours or, or, or actually maybe flip that. Flip that. Its big gun is its main armament. It hits on threes. But all of its supplemental shit, its side stuff, hits on fours. Like, that's an option. You know? Like, you can do that if you need it. So, weapons themselves can be balanced in a whole other way. It also lets you balance it depending on the thing you're running. There is a... You know, you know a power fist on a guardsman is dog compared to a power fist on a chaos space marine captain yet they both cost 10. there's so many more options to go with that adjust and they have they're all their own values everything i am so happy so happy with this so far there's almost nothing on this this data sheet here that i dislike um faction ability synapse is cool uh, Skulking Horrors, I'm not gonna lie, guys, um, this is, a, this is actually a, a really good ability, like, it's actually a really good ability. Once per turn, when an enemy unit ends a normal move, advance, or fall back within 9 inches of this unit, if it is not within engaged range of one or more enemy units, it can make a normal move of up to 6 inches. It doesn't say that you can't get back into engagement range, though. Like, there's no restriction on that. It just says if it's not within engagement range. Um, D6 inches. Did I say 6 inches? Sorry, D6 inches. Um, this can really spike. Like, rolling a 6 is it's really far, man. Like, that's actually really far. Perhaps the normal move text. You make a great point. Normal move would stop you from getting an engagement range. Because you cannot end a normal move in engagement range. Only a charge move or a heroic. You make a great point. Thank you for bringing that up. Good catch. Still, getting to move up to D6 if someone just gets close to you. Especially if you're spamming gaunts. That amount of movement uh, ability. That's huge. That's really cool. Um, anywho. Last but not least, let's talk about Orange County. Um, objective control, two. Another brilliant idea. Brilliant idea. Um, and I'm assuming OBSEC is just gone. It's just out of here. OBSEC is just removed. Is removed. In place of OBSEC, you can have objective control, which allows you to have a set number per unit. So, and it also does, it does two things. One, it gives her that silly combo where, you know, 
an, an Imperial Knight Dominus class counts as 10 models, but it's not obsec, and it gets outheld by one Gretchen. Uh, that's nice. Um, but it also allows you to load up different units. You might say that, mm, who knows, maybe like a Gargoyle may only count as one because they're not a troop. But Termagants count as two per model because they are a troop. Maybe regular Imperial Guardsmen count as two because they're a troop. But Chaos Cultists count as one. Um, hell, as far as we know, a Space Marine could only count as two. Maybe three. Because they're um, like, like a like a Stern Guard veteran, I mean, not like a Primaris um, Intercessor. Mainly because it depends like what is a troop and what's not a troop. Maybe an Intercessor could be three or like a four because it's an Intercessor. But a Vanguard vet or a Blade Guard ch uh, champion could be like three because it's not obsec. It's not it's not like um, a troop, which can be really handy. Uh, and it also gives you so many things. One, no more handing out obsec, but you want to give your unit plus one OC? Bam, there's an option. Hey, custodians have this weird back and forth obsec thing. Who gives a shit? Hey, guess what? Custodians are like base seven. You know, because they're custodians. You don't need to worry about obsec this, obsec that. You can just load things up in this or that way. You can, you can, uh, you can do debilitating, um, spells to enemy units. Instead of this enemy unit loses obsec, this enemy unit has their OC dropped by one. To a minimum of one, probably. Uh, you can, you can give them, uh, army buffs like that. Imperial fists. Come on. They're like iron warriors. They're like... They, you know, uh, army-wide trait, they get plus one OC on all their units. You know? I bet you leadership affects OC. It could. Maybe if you fail leadership, your OC goes down. It's such a good change. And it's so streamlined. It's so streamlined. Because you don't need to fuck around with, like, what's obsec? Okay, we got two guys that are obsec on here. So both obsec now cancels each other out. So now we're going to do models after that. But that it's just... How many terminal guns you got on there? Seven. How much is their OC? Two. All right, you got 14. I have nine guardsmen. Their OC is two. I have 18. I win. It's just... It's just so smooth i love it this is the kind of simplified uh not simple that really screams good shit to me there is nothing about this data card i dislike moving on though um they talk about uh the no books on the first day of the new edition rules for each one will be free to download or be able to buy as convenient portable card decks i love the card decks thing um, I'm, they say on the first day of the new edition, though, I'm assuming new codexes will need to be bought and will need to be carried and all that kind of stuff. But I am still happy it is a step in the right direction. It, it is, it is one step forward and I'm okay with that. Um, especially considering that we're all getting a rewrite. Here it is. Army selection. Pick a faction, pick a warlord and the units you like. Just no more than three of any type. Stay within your point limit, and that's it. I like that a lot. I uh, I like that a lot. That's great. Detachments were always very confusing. Um, let's see. Other things to note. Other things to note. Um, codexes, codexes, codexes. Free rules. Complexity of the game won't increase. They say this one, this weird thing. One in, one out ethos. For army and sub faction rules, I, I don't know what that means. My assumption is that every new old rule will be changed with, with this like a new rule, so there won't be rules bloat. It's like judgment tokens are going away, but in place is the judgment book. <coughs> I'm assuming that's kind of what it, what it means. Um, that's 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 my assumption. Uh, combat patrol is cool, great for new players. I don't care much because I don't play new games like that but uh 
Uh, it's cool. I'm glad the Arcs of Omen books aren't being retired immediately. That's cool as well. It's still not something that I play uh, myself, but it is what it is. Um, yeah. Uh, so, other things to note. Yep, totally new edition. We know about that. Quicker and easier to play. We know about that. How easy it is to get in the game. Uh, points, combat patrols, this whole thing. Collections, etc. OC stat. Um... Monster vehicles still degrade as they take damage. Instead of three separate profiles, a single line on each unit or card that acts in this explains any penalties incurred. Um, special rule. Okay, thank fucking God. Universal special rules are returning. Praise God. Praise the Emperor. God bless him. Oh my God. F from golden light they come. They came from below. Deep strike. Warp Strike, Demonic Strike, it's all the same. One of the few things from 7th I want to see back. Feel No Pain, we always call it Feel No Pain anyway. Um, it does lose a little bit of flavor. I, I do, I will state that. It was kind of cool that the Custodians, Deep Strike was called From Golden Light They Come. That's just a really cool name. But this is uh, a completely necessary change and I'm okay with it. That is my, my tiny nitpick, my teeniest nitpick. I still agree with this change. I still 100% agree with this change. That being said, I, I my tiniest nitpick. Um, so now Feel No Pain, Deep Strike, those are two. Uh, ignoring the phase caps and Feel No Pains will probably have some overwhelm or trample for magic people. Would be pretty good. Um, you probably will have your wound gating one of a certain amount of wounds, which is good. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. Twin linked is being added. Yep, there's also that thing that they throw in there, which is pretty good. Uh, lots of great options there. I love that. Um, the, the degradation thing is interesting. I would like to talk about something they mentioned on the live stream which is a massive adjustment in toughness. Um, they said that toughness is going up substantially for a lot of things where uh, I'm going to assume toughness is capping at 12. Uh, as you saw for a while, toughness eight was generally the toughest thing in the game. And it wasn't until the last couple codexes they were starting to throw around T9. Uh, mainly on great unclean ones and uh, some Imperial Guard tanks. Um, but they said that the weapons themselves will not be changing much at all in terms of strength. Now, there's a couple things to be adjusted to, to, to ask about this because... This is all just a little bit of specula speculation. Um, that's cool. I like that. Um, you know, Melt says are strength eight. That's great. You know, that's that's fine. I'll get that. Um, they made the statement that you could run nothing but Melta and Plasma and basically be good to kill everything in the game. And they were right. Uh, for, for me, I if I'm playing Sisters, I just run, you know, you, you spam Melta. Because Melta kills everything. Because it's, cause it's Melta. Um, having the increase in toughness is pretty good. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be doing some kind of equivalent AP decrease, or if they're going to add special rules to make up for it, because like T9, it might be kind of an, un, uh, the, the newest hotness, right? In, in current edition, but T9 is is pretty crippling on certain things like going from wounding on fours to wounding on fives is a 33 percent decrease in damage but it's pretty substantial um the fours i mean come on chat any of you guys who played tower guard and gone from fours to fives it's kind of debilitating and awful and so if most things are staying that way, 
it can it can also really suck. Um, especially depending on certain weapons, because you know, for a while, strength six wasn't great, but you could rely on like a good amount of strength six, strength seven firepower. And even though you were wounding on fives, you've had enough of it, that was pretty good. If strength six is wounding on sixes on certain units, that's a bit scary. Same thing with fifth or with uh, strength five. Um, this is true. Uh, flesh bear, flesh boars, flesh, blah, blah. flesh boars did lose their AP. They did lose their AP, which I am glad because I don't know why the hell flesh boars were AP one. Uh, great, the termagants were not destroying everything, but it just felt kind of strange. Um, termagants were too expensive though. That was the problem. Um, AP going down is good. But I am a little frightened about two things. One, regular bodies. Your classics T4 Marine. AP going down is good because they have good armor saves. But a T4 Marine will still die a horrible death to Plasma. Um, and so, but if Plasma le is less effective against vehicles... It doesn't change the fact that Marines will still die to a swift breeze. Now, if they lower the AP across the board, that does help. Uh, but we do have a bit of like a, a quantity of attacks thing that's been kind of happening a bit uh, in 40k. It's not just AP creep. It's also amount of shots creep. It's the reason why swooping hawks will kill anything in the game because you give them guide and doom and the next thing you know, AP Jack just kills everything. Um, so, like, plasma, yeah, it should kill tough infantry and stuff, but it's not priced properly and there's still quite a good volume of it. Um, maybe if plasma's, like, AP went down a little bit, you know, went from... Uh, went down to like two, uh, or you know, I, it depends. Um, increasing a lot of toughness will is not the overarching solution. It's not. There, there's too many shots. The AP's too high, um, and the strength for the most part was pretty high. <clears throat> Not to mention sixes to hit auto wounds is pretty rough. Things like Born Soldiers, Hail of Doom. Also very difficult. Um, yeah, like Vashtor, T7, 4 up Invul, minus 1 damage, 14 wounds, 2 up armor, dies in one turn like this. It's a little iffy. Uh, basically, here's my statement. I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when I see it. That's all, that's all I gotta say. I will believe it when I see it. Because they have written themselves into quite the hole. Because if you make... <clears throat> if you make vehicles too tanky, like the T11 and stuff, if you don't have proper anti-tank, you just lose. Which you might say, well, that's your fault. You should lose. And it's like, well... Sometimes I like those miracle moments of like... You know, bolt guns just rolling well and then killing the tank. It's kind of fun. Um, the difference is I shouldn't be relying on only bolt guns. But, uh, you know, vehicles become really really high tanky and stuff. The next thing you know, they're safe from the AP creep and the strength creep. But regular Marines and normal bodies still aren't safe from it. So that's still a problem. Not to mention you got the whole ignore line of sight and aircraft issue. <clears throat> Which is its own thing. Um, those Desolation Squad Marines, that we, the t-shirt cans that we all thought were terrible. Uh, local, um, if this thing is broken, I'm buying 30 of them. Player, Mr. Manny Chima, I think won a tournament with 30 of them. And I think Dark Angels. So, apparently, uh, ignore line of sight. Ignore line of sight, man. Ignore line of sight. It's so good. But at the end of the day, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it with the lethality thing. Um, I'm really curious. I am a little scared that we're going to lose a bit too much fluff. 
I think the reason people play so much 40k is not just because the game is fun, but because you get to uh, do your role playing in a weird way. You get to play as a general. Um, it's like you RPGing an army. Um, as opposed to you playing a character. And I'm, I'm a little worried they're going to go too far into the playing a character world, but, you know, I'll uh, I'll withhold judgment and just kind of hope that that's not what happens and we end up getting, uh, getting the right stuff overall. We'll see how it goes. Um, we'll see how it goes. This Termagant thing is, is a good sign. Is a very good sign. Uh, and if this stays the way it does, then uh, we'll see. Anyway. So far, we're happy. Um, but I'm, a, uh, I'm hoping that we're not going to be too unflavorful. But uh, I like the direction we're going. We got like three more months. So uh, let's get ready for that drip feed. All right. Uh, Necrons are going to be bad again, I know it. 